Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Mohan Gayan, Demonstrator, Department of Community Medicine, Arjikar Medical College, Kolkata. Today's topic is Sexually Transmitted Infections. This is one of the most important topics to discuss nowadays and also an underrated topic in the syllabus. So I request you to feel free to discuss this special topic breaking all the barriers and stigma. Let's start. First of all, we have to know the definition of sexually transmitted infections. Although the term is self-explanatory. Sexually transmitted infections are infections that are passed from one person to another through sexual contact. The contact is usually through vaginal, oral or anal sex. Here are some examples of STI as like chlamydia, herpes, gonorrhea, HIV or AIDS, HPV and syphilis. Now come to the terminology portion. Previously the STIs were called venereal diseases. The adjective venereal is derived from the word venus, meaning the goddess of love in Egypt. In view of the social stigma attached to the level VD, uh, WHO rephrased in 1974 the nomenclature from VD to STD, that means sexually transmitted disease. The current terminology is sexually transmitted infections since 1999 as it incorporates asymptomatic infections also. Now come to the extent of the problems. STIS are the global problem. The true incidence of STIS is difficult to estimate because of under-reporting as well as due to the secrecy that surrounds them. Here are some reasons behind this under-reporting. First of all, the disease is concealed by the patient because of stigma and shame. The disease is often not diagnosed properly. And taking self and incomplete treatment by the patient. So these are the main reasons behind under-reporting. More than 1 million STIs are acquired every day worldwide. 90% of them occur in developing countries. In India, the annual incidence of STI is estimated to be about 5% of population and it is on the increase because of the change in the lifestyle. 1 out of 20 sexually active Indians has sexually transmitted infection. I have previously mentioned that more than 1 million STIs are acquired every day worldwide left untreated. Some can have serious consequences. Now we will discuss different epidemiological factors as like agent factors, host factors, social factors, etc. Here are some examples of causative agents and the diseases caused by them. We will discuss these diseases in details uh, in the next portion of the presentation. Here are some examples of common STDs as like Chlamydia, it is a bacterial infection. Transmission occurs through fluids. Gonorrhea, it is also a bacterial infection. Transmission occurs through fluids. Trichomoniasis, it is a protozoal infection. Transmission occurs through fluids. Herpes, it is a viral infection. Transmission occurs through skin to skin contact. Syphilis, it is also a bacterial infection. Transmission occurs through skin to skin contact. HPV, it is also a viral infection. Transmission occurs through skin to skin contact. Now come to the host factors. First of all, age. The incidence of STI is found to be highest in the age group of 20 to 30 years, followed by 15 to 19 years and above 30 years. The incidence is more among men than among women in developing countries. However, severity is more among women but it is same in developed countries. 
it is high among unmarried divorced and separated individuals than among married couples in case of socio economic status people of lower socio economic status are more affected if we talk on occupation incidence is high among commercial sex workers now come to the social factors sti is called as a social disease because of the prevalence of social factors as like prostitution poverty illiteracy polygamy polyandry broken homes sexual disharmony social disruption social stigma co education and co work first of all prostitution a prostitute acts as a reservoir of infection they are now called as commercial sex workers in case of poverty the extreme poverty in the family predisposes the girls to go astray and become prostitutes the prostitution in turn becomes an occupation for easy money illiteracy illiteracy associated with emotional immaturity predisposes the girls to become easy victims of sti polygamy means one person having many wives still practiced in some tribal areas predisposes for the prevalence of sti's polyandry that means on women having many husbands is also responsible for the increased prevalence of stds some women change their husbands frequently in case of broken homes in families where there is death or divorce of the parents the children are likely to go astray in avenues of pleasure predisposing to sti in case of sexual disharmony among married persons due to strange relation predisposes them to become victims of sti in case of social disruption like famine war floods and such other disasters favor the spread of stds in case of social stigma attached to the stds associated with shame accounts for non detection of cases not disclosing the sources of contact taking incomplete self treatment lead on to increased prevalence of stis co education and co work also foster casual sexual relationships now come to the demographic factors like industrialization urbanization migration of the people to urban areas for seeking an employment eruptions of slums isolation from the family also foster casual sexual relationships as among long distance truck drivers now come to the international travel in this days of jet travel there has been rapid spread of stis internationally hiv or aids is the current pandemic in the world now come to the changes in the lifestyle especially alcoholism increases the desire of sex and encourages prostitution which in turn increases the sale of alcohol the present youths want a relaxation of moral and cultural values they want freedom from supervision and equal rights for both the sexes who are high risk groups among the high risk groups there are core group and bridge population who are included in the core group core group includes commercial sex workers homosexuals call girls drug users hotel staffs etc who are included in the bridge population bridge populations comprise of people who are at close proximity to high risk groups example clients of commercial sex workers truck drivers refugees migrants partners of drug users etc now observe this diagram this is the general population and this is the core group and this is the bridge population it acts as a link between the general population and the core group there are some examples of common sexually transmitted infections and their symptoms management and long term effects we will discuss these diseases individually in details one by one in the next few slides first of all gonorrhea or gonococcal infections The word gonorrhea is derived from the Greek words gonos and roia. Gonos means seed and roia means flow. Causative agent: Nigeria gonorrhea. 
it is an intracellular gram negative diplococcus incubation period is 2 to 10 days approximately symptoms in female uh, vaginal discharge difficulty in urination off cycle menstrual bleeding abdominal or pelvic pain bleeding after sexual intercourse in male painful urination pass like discharge from tip of penis scrotal pain and swelling due to ascending infection also affects rectum throat eyes ophthalmia neonatum due to vertical transmission that means transmission from mother to newborn child what are the treatment options available usually antibiotics are used as like ceftriaxone cefixim ciprofloxacin etc now come to this slide uh, on the left hand side symptoms of gonorrhea have been depicted in case of male and female and on the right hand side gram stain of gonococcal erythritis have been shown in this slide you can see the intracellular gram negative diplococci and this picture depicts the infection to eyes that is conjunctivitis and this is the penile discharge and ulceration due to gonococcal infection now come to the second disease chlamydial infection a high percentage of individuals have no obvious clinical manifestation of this infection causative agent is chlamydia trachomatis an obligate intracellular bacteria what are the symptoms and complications symptoms and complications are similar to gonorrhea it can result in sterility in women or vertical transmission during childbirth leading to conjunctivitis or eye inflammation in the newborn in men it can cause urethritis with possible epididymitis what are the treatment options available usually antibiotics are used as like azithromycin or doxycycline this is the chart to manage a patient complaining of painful scrotal swelling there are so many reasons behind scrotal swelling uh, if there is a history of injury to scrotum refer the patient to higher level facility if there is no such history examine the scrotum and notice if there is any swelling if swelling is not present reassure the patient and educate provide condom and promote usage if there is swelling of the scrotum then observe the testes whether they are rotated or retracted if retraction or rotation occurs in the testes refer the patient immediately to higher level facility if there is no such history or no rotation or retraction of the testes treat the patient for gonorrhea and chlamydia with antibiotics as like azithromycin cefixim or septriaxone and also treat partner even if asymptomatic and advise return after 7 days educate on safe sex counsel provide condoms and promote usage advise return after 14 days refer to vctc that means voluntary counseling and testing center if tenderness and swelling persists uh, refer the patient to higher level facility if there is no tenderness and swelling that means the patient is cured now come to the third disease trichomoniasis this parasitic infection mind it this is a parasite this parasitic infection leads to vaginitis and vaginal discharge in women in male it may cause urethritis but most of the time it is asymptomatic there is increasing evidence that trichomonas vaginalis may cause adverse outcomes in pregnancy example low birth weight and premature rupture of membranes etc treatment options are metronidazole secnidazole or tinidazole carefully read the given statement and answer the following question onil a 28 years old married male a truck driver by occupation presented to the opd of your hospital with penile discharge 
history revealed that O'Neill visited brothels and examination revealed mucopurulent discharge from the urethra. Mention the most probable diagnosis. Outline the management components of this case according to the syndromic approach. This is the chart to manage a patient complaining of urethral discharge. First of all, take relevant history and examine withdrawing foreskin in uncircumcised male. Milk urethra if necessary. Observe whether discharge is present or not. If the discharge is present, treat the patient for gonorrhea, chlamydia and trichomoniasis. Also, treat partner even if asymptomatic. Educate on safe sex, counsel, provide condoms and promote usage. Advise return after 7 days and refer to VCTC that means Voluntary Counseling and Testing Center. Examine the patient after 7 days. If the patient is cured, educate on safe sex, counsel, provide condoms and promote usage, refer to VCTC. If the patient is not cured, refer the patient to higher level facility. Carefully read the given statement and answer the following questions. Shongita, a 26 years old lady, presents to the OPD of your hospital with vaginal discharge. History reveals that she is a commercial sex worker. On examination, there is cervical discharge but no tenderness on bimanual pelvic examination. What is your most probable diagnosis? Outline the management components of this case according to the syndromic approach. This is the chart to manage a patient complaining of vaginal discharge. First of all, observe whether lower abdominal pain is present or not. If lower abdominal pain is present, use appropriate flowchart. If there is no any lower abdominal pain, endocervical examination with speculum is done and relevant history is taken as like whether the partner is symptomatic or not or whether there is any recent new partner or not if there is any multiple partner whether the spouse is returning after a long stay away from home if there is no such history treat the patient for vaginitis only and also educate on safe sex counsel provide condoms and promote usage refer to vctc and there is uh, any significant history of the symptomatic partner, recent new partner or multiple partner or spouse returning after a long stay away from home. Treat the patient for cervicitis and for vaginitis. And also treat the partner even if asymptomatic. Treat the partner for gonorrhea, chlamydia and trichomoniasis with tinidazole or metronidazole and fluconazole tablet. And after 14 days, if vaginal discharge persists to those patients who are treated for vaginitis only, then treat the patient for cervicitis. After 7 days, if vaginal discharge persists, refer the patient to higher level facility. Carefully read the given statement and answer the following questions. Komola, a 28 years old lady, presents to the health facility complaining of lower abdominal pain and excessive vaginal discharge following the last day of her recent menstrual period. On examination, there is mucopurulent cervical discharge and the bimanual pelvic examination shows considerable cervical motion tenderness and adnexal tenderness. On inquiry, she tells that her husband is a truck driver and he has a second wife. What would be your probable diagnosis? Outline the management components of this case according to the syndromic approach. Mind it, here pregnancy is excluded because she has given a history of recent menstrual period. Now come to the chart. This is the chart to manage a patient complaining of lower abdominal pain. First of all, take history and do abdominal and pelvic examination. If there is any significant history of missed period or overdue period, recent or uh, recent delivery or abortion, guarding pelvic mass, refer the patient immediately to higher level facility. If there is no such history, observe the cervix and notice the cervical tenderness 
or adnex cell tenderness and note the temperature whether it is higher or not if there is no any adnex cell mass advise the patient to return for re-evaluation if pain persists if there is any adnex cell mass refer the patient to higher level facility if there is a history of mucopus exuding from the cervix and or tenderness on cervical movement and or adnexal tenderness or the temperature is higher then treat the patient for pelvic inflammatory disease that means treat the patient for gonorrhea treat the patient for chlamydia and treat the patient for anaerobic infection and the patient is asked to return after three days or even earlier if pain persists or get worse. Then checkup is done whether the patient is improved or not. If no improvement occurs, refer the patient to higher level facility. If improvement occurs, complete the treatment, advise the patient to return if pain persists, refer the patient to VCTC that means Voluntary Counseling and Testing Center and also educate on safe sex, counsel, provide condoms and promote usage, refer the patient to VCTC. Now come to the disease syphilis. Syphilis causes ulceration of the urogenital tract, mouth and rectum. Causative agent is Triponema pallidum. It is a motile, spiral shaped gram-negative bacteria. There are three stages of syphilis. Primary stage, secondary stage and tertiary stage. Incubation period of primary stage is 2 to 4 weeks. In this stage, Shankar is present. After 3 to 8 weeks, secondary stage develops. In the secondary stage, you can see the rashes, condylomata acuminatum, generalized lymph node enlargement, arthritis, and in the dark field microscopy, Triponoma pallidum can be seen. After 3 to 8 years, tertiary stage develops, and in this stage, gumma is present. These are the stages of syphilis shown in this chart. Treatment options available. Usually antibiotics are used as like benzathione penicillin, doxycycline or erythromycin. Now see these pictures. This is the primary stage of syphilis and ulceration over the penis and this is the ulceration over the tongue both are in the primary stage and this is the secondary stage of syphilis and this is the dark field microscopy of the triponema pallidum this is the triponema pallidum spiral shaped now come to the sancroid it is caused by the bacterium Haemophilus ducrei and results in painful superficial ulcers. Mind it, it is painful, often with regional lymphadenopathy. On gram staining, railroad track or school of fish appearance is shown. In the right hand side, see this picture. This is the school of fish or railroad track appearance. This picture depicts the ulceration over the glans penis due to hemophilus ducrei infection. What are the treatment options available? Usually antibiotics are used as like azithromycin and erythromycin, septriaxone, ciprofloxacin, etc. Now come to the next disease, lymphogranuloma venerum or LGV. It is a sexually transmitted infection caused by specific serovars of chlamydia trachomatis. It commonly presents with swelling of lymph nodes in the groin. Initially, there is a small painless ulcer of the genitalia. 3 to 30 days after exposure, it may pass unrecognized and resolve spontaneously. If untreated, the disease may cause extensive lymphatic damage resulting in the elephantiasis of the genitalia. Characteristics features are saxophone penis and group sign. You can see in this picture, this is the saxophone penis and this is the instrument saxophone. 
and this is the group sign in the inguinal region what are the treatment options available usually antibiotics are used as like doxycycline erythromycin and tetracycline surgical operation may be of benefit in cases with extensive elephantiasis or deformity this is the chart to manage a patient complaining of enlarged and or painful inguinal lymph nodes first of all take relevant history and examine for genital ulcer if genital ulcer is present use the appropriate flow chart and if there is no any uh, genital ulcer but there is uh, painful inguinal lymph nodes or enlargement of the lymph nodes then treat the patient for lgp with doxycycline erythromycin etc and also treat the partner even if asymptomatic educate on safe sex counsel provide condoms and promote usage refer to vctc the patient is asked to return after 7 days for follow up or even earlier if pain persists or get worse if the patient responds to treatment complete the treatment educate counsel provide condoms and promote usage if no respond occurs after 7 days refer the patient to higher level facility now come to the next disease that is donovanosis or granuloma inguinali it is a genital ulcerative disease caused by the intracellular gram negative bacterium that is klebsiella granulomatis formerly known as kalimatobacterium granulomatis the first manifestation appearing after a 3 to 40 days of incubation period is usually a small papule which ruptures to form a granulomatous lesion that is characteristically pain free and bleeds readily on contact often elevated above the level of the surrounding skin granuloma inguinali is characterized by intracellular inclusion bodies in macrophages referred to as donovan bodies appearance of closed septipin or septipin appearance is seen in donovan bodies in this picture you can see the ulceration over the glans penis and this is the picture of donovan bodies and this is the septipin appearance now come to the next disease that is genital herpes herpes simplex virus type 2 or hsv2 is the main causative organism for genital herpes classical genital herpes can be recognized by the presence of typical papular lesions that progress to multiple blisters and ulcers the first episode of manifestation is frequently associated with a prolonged course of ulceration lasting up to 3 to 4 weeks antiviral treatment of these episodes can be very effective in shortening the duration and alleviating pain hsv2 infection is lifelong mind it it is a lifelong infection and recurrent ulcerative episodes occur what are the treatment options available usually oral antiviral medications such as acyclovir valacyclovir famcyclovir are all effective in reducing the severity and duration of first episode genital herpes in this picture you can see the ulcers multiple blisters now come to the next causative organism that is human papilloma virus hpv causes anogenital warts which vary from the common soft flesh colored protuberances which may become exuberant that is cauliflower like to papular flat warts on the drier areas example shaft of penis they can be seen anywhere in the genitalia the other common manifestation is cervical cancer caused by some subtypes of hpv example hpv 16 and hpv 18 what are the treatment options available treatment is generally reserved for the large lesions because subclinical infection tend to resolve on their own how to prevent A regular examination of the cervix and cervical cytology using pap smear in this picture you can see the genital warts now come to the vaginal candidiasis candidiasis is an infection caused by a yeast a type of fungus called candida albicans 
Candida normally lives on skin and inside the body such as in the mouth, throat, gut and vagina without causing any problems. Vaginal thrush is usually not spread from person to person and although sexual transmission is possible but it's unusual. Candida is therefore not regarded as a sexually transmitted infection. The yeast that causes thrush is present at all times and not acquired from another person. What are the treatment options available? Usually antifungal medications are used in the form of cream, ointment or tablet. Now come to the another important part of this topic that is syndromic approach to STI. First of all, we have to know the definitions of symptom, sign and syndrome. What is a symptom? A symptom is a medical term indicating the nature of the disease. It is usually subjective that means observed by the patient and not measured. For an example, in case of common cold, sinus pain due to congestion is the symptom that is subjective and runny nose is the sign that is objective. What is the sign? A sign is an objective, observable phenomenon that can be identified by another person, usually the doctor. For an example, in case of chickenpox, spots and blisters are the sign that is objective. And fatigue is the symptom that is subjective. What is the syndrome? A group of signs and symptoms that occur together and characterize a particular abnormality or condition. For example, AIDS or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, Downs syndrome, etc. Why syndromic approach is adopted? STIs are caused by different microbes. It is difficult to identify each of them through laboratory investigations, which is not only costly but also time consuming and not within reach of many patients. There is a possibility of having more than one STI at a time. To address all these issues, syndromic approach is adopted by NACO as a primary strategy to control and prevent STIs or RTIs and treat the patient at first contact and thereby reduces secondary cases. Syndromic management is a scientific and proven approach as it ensures correct and complete treatment covering most of the causative organisms and includes patient education, counseling, partner treatment, follow-up and documentation and reporting and where necessary performing basic laboratory tests. These are the common STI symptoms in men, pelvic pain, burning sensation or pain when peeing, testicle pain or pain during ejaculation, blisters or ulcers on the genital area, bottom that is rectum or mouth, need to be more frequently or discharge coming out of your penis. These are the common STI symptoms in women. Blister or ulcers on your genital area, pain or a burning sensation during micturition, unusual vaginal discharge, abdominal pain, pain during sex, pelvic pain, vaginal bleeding, rash or an itchy feeling. Now come to the Shuruksha Clinic. Shuruksha Clinics formally designated as STI-RTI Clinics. These clinics are established by National AIDS Control Organization or NACO for the better health services and for the prevention of HIV or AIDS in India. These clinics are associated with the Dermatology Department in the uh, government hospitals and government medical colleges so as to cater the need of prevention of sexually transmitted infections and reproductive tract infections. Suroksha Clinic provides STI treatment services free of cost to those who seek services from the center. What is the link between STIs and HIV? A person who has an STI runs as much as four times the greater risk of contracting HIV from a sexual partner than a person who is not infected with STI. That means there is four times greater risk of having HIV in case of STI. An ulcerative STI poses a significantly greater risk of HIV transmission because the HIV virus can enter the body more easily through the genital ulcer. 
HIV virus is present in large numbers in the semen and vaginal fluids of infected persons. Unsafe sexual contact with an infected person enables easy entry of HIV virus, especially in the presence of ulcerative lesions on the genitalia. Therefore, because of the strong link between HIV and STI, it is very important to treat all STIs completely and curatively as early as possible. Correct and consistent use of condoms can protect against HIV and STI by preventing contact with infected semen and vaginal fluids. We all know that prevention is better than cure. The best approach to prevent STI is to avoid exposure. At this first level of prevention, the likelihood of being exposed to STI can be reduced by delaying sexual activity for adolescent. Adolescent can avoid STI and pregnancy at a time when they are particularly vulnerable by delaying sexual activity until they are older. Sexual abstinence is another way to avoid risk of STI. Decreasing the number of sex partners. Know your sexual partners. The more partners you or your partners have, the higher your risk of getting an STI. Using condoms correctly and consistently. It is the most important point to note. Using a latex or polyurethane condom every time reduces the risk of infection. Sex Education Some sex practices increase the risk. Sexual acts that tear or break the skin carry a higher risk of STI. Anal sex poses a higher risk because tissues in the rectum break easily. Body fluids also can carry STI. Having any unprotected sexual contact with an infected person poses a high risk of getting an STI. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment. Currently, a high risk group is visiting physician 30 to 40 days after symptoms develop. It should be brought down to less than 3 days. Get vaccines. Vaccines are available to help protect against hepatitis B and human papilloma virus or HPV. What is contact tracing? In public health, contact tracing is the process of identifying persons who may have been exposed to an infected persons or contacts and subsequent collection of further data to assess transmission. It is an intervention strategy adopted to control STIs or STDs. What is the procedure? The diagnosed patients are interviewed for their sexual contacts by specially trained staff. Then the contacts are traced and contacted via telephone or mobile and then persuaded to attend the STD clinic for examination and treatment, preferably before completion of incubation period. What are the limitations of contact tracing? Success entirely depends upon the willingness of the patients to disclose all the sex contacts voluntarily. These are the color coded kits provided by NACO and compositions are mentioned over the packet. Kit on is grey in color. It is given in case of urethral discharge, painful scrotal swelling or cervical discharge. Composition of the kit is tablet azithromycin on gram, tablet cefixim 400 mg. Kit 2 is greenish in color. It is indicated in vaginal discharge. Composition is tablet secnidazole 2 gram and Fluconazole 150 mg. Kit 3 is white in color. It is indicated in genital ulcer that is non herpetic. Composition is injection benzathion penicillin and tablet azithromycin. Kit 4 is blue in color. It is indicated in genital ulcer that is non herpetic. Capsule doxycycline if penicillin allergy and tablet azithromycin. Kit 5 is red in color. 
it is indicated in genital ulcer that is herpetic composition is tablet acyclovir kit 6 is yellow in color it is indicated in lower abdominal pain compositions are tablet cefixim metronidazole and doxycycline kit 7 is black in color it is indicated in inguinal vivo compositions are tablet azithromycin and capsule doxycycline 